Hi, folks. I'm thrilled to be with you today. This is Colin Richards, president and founder of Lord & Richards, and we are a group of advisors helping people just like you every single day to achieve financial independence. And we're helping you to do that so you can do amazing things with what God has put in your hands. In this particular segment, we're gonna be talking about the problem of inflation, the problem of inflation. And then in the next one, we're gonna talk about what you can do about it. But first of all, it's important that we understand what inflation is, how it got here, and then we can develop a strategy to figure out how we're gonna make sure you thrive, whether inflation is rising or deflating. And so first, let's talk about inflation. Inflation really just refers to the healthy, normal growth of a society and its gross domestic product. Gross domestic product is the sum in dollars of all the things that a, a, a country produces. And we do feel that there is a healthy rate of inflation. The Fed, what we call the Federal Reserve, has targeted a healthy inflation rate of around 2%. That's what they believe and what the economists who support what they're doing believe will keep our economy moving forward, representing growth, but not runaway growth. Well, the problem is when that growth begins to exceed whoever's idea of the ideal amount is, we begin to talk more and more about inflation. It's always with us unless the economy is receding or going backwards. That's what we call a recession. And we know that a recession is defined as two quarters in a row of negative growth, negative growth. That's a funny way to say it, negative growth. In other words, not growing, but actually going backwards on prices. And so you say, well, what exactly is the problem? If prices are going up, what if my income is going up with it? Well, in a perfect world, as you go out and you go into the grocery store and you check out the price of eggs or milk or butter, your income has grown enough to support the increase in those prices. As a matter of fact, here's some interesting statistics. If you tried to buy a dozen eggs back in 2002, they cost you a buck and three cents. In today's dollars, and I'm now talking about pre-spike in inflation in 2022, but prior to that, it was a buck 66. Oh, by the way, right now, inflation is running high enough that you might actually be paying over $4 because of some of the problems we've had with birds, with chickens. White bread back in 2002 was a buck two. Today, buck 64. On and on it goes. How about a gallon of gas? How about a uh, gallon of milk? How about a steak? Bacon? You can look up all these things online and you can see, wow, everything does eventually go up. But hey, my income's been going up, so no problem, right? Well, the problem is that generally... Employers are reluctant to commit themselves to long-term increases in income, knowing that if we have a recession, it's pretty unusual that folks are willing to put up with cuts in their paycheck to balance it out, right? So if, if your paycheck literally tracked inflation, it would go both up and down, right? So that gets to be a challenge for employers. So what we generally see is that employers' raises are lagging behind. Right now, we're looking into a recession. I believe we're either in it or on the doorstep. We just haven't realized it yet. That means that companies are actually laying off workers, some very well-known in the news recently. And so that means that they're not going to be raising a lot of salaries, even at the same time that they're laying off workers. And so when expenses increase faster than your income, that's when it really begins to bite. So inflation can be good when it indicates economic growth, when your wages keep up. But it's definitely bad when it erodes your purchasing power because your wages are not keeping up. And now let's talk about retirees. As you think about retirement, often the sources of your income are less tied to growth and expansion in our economy, such as Social Security, right? Social Security, we know, receives a cost of living increase, but during, during normal years, it's not like it's spiking up with the growth in the economy. It goes up a little bit, as opposed to the person who's working for a great company that's hiring new people, acquiring great talent, and willing to pay for it. And so the problem for retirees is if your investments are conservative, which they should be getting more conservative as you get older, reflecting the fact that you have less time to recover from market collapses, then your rate of growth can be vulnerable during periods of high inflation. 
And so how did we get here? Well, retirees need to begin thinking about solutions, and we're going to address those in the next episode. But for now, I want to talk about how this problem happens, what is going on, and perhaps um, what we might foresee in the future. So inflation spiked over 9% in midsummer of 2022. Now, it's gone down a little bit since then, and in late 2022, it was at only 7.1%. Now I say only, but you do realize, of course, that back in 1980, inflation was up to over 13%, averaging over 13%. So that's a challenge, right? If inflation gets up that high and wages aren't keeping up, your spending power is being demolished. You say, well, how does this happen? Well, for one, during the COVID, the pandemic, we saw a great influx of cash from the federal government. A lot of that cash was pushed to the sidelines as people were not able to take trips and buy things and so forth. But eventually, Americans began to spend that money. Businesses began to spend the money they received in the form of uh, disaster loans, payroll protection programs, uh, employee retention credits, and so forth. All of this was designed to keep American business afloat, keep the American consumer afloat. But guess what? If everybody doesn't spend it gradually and instead spends it suddenly, we now have what's called a supply and demand problem. Okay, so the supply was not able to keep up with demand. If everybody wants the same 65 inch TV because money's burning a hole in their pocket, then the price is going to go up because as we run out of those, we're going to have to manufacture more. And that means we're going to have to accelerate the pace. And when we accelerate the pace of manufacturing, it is a more costly scenario. And so as supply diminished in the face of heightened demand, we saw all kinds of things shooting up, real estate, electronic goods, and so forth. Well, inflation does present problems, but it also presents opportunities. Because if you're in this for the long haul and you develop a financial plan, we can plan for short-term periods of high inflation. We know that historically in the past, the markets have responded well, even during periods of high inflation. They've been your best offsetting factor. And we're going to get into that. But for right now, what I want to emphasize is you need a plan to, to address the issue of what happens when costs rise, even when I'm retired, even when I may have a more steady, more fixed series of income. And so that's going to be in our next episode. How do you prepare? How do you prepare and develop using specific strategies? But what I know we can do right now is we can put a plan in place to address it. And that's what we're doing at Lord & Richards every single day. We're seeing people just like you having wonderful conversations. It's com entirely complimentary. We sit down, we have a great cup of coffee, some cookies together, and we let you, and if you're married, your spouse, sit down and share with us your goals, your dreams, your values. It's an amazing conversation that you probably haven't had before. And I'd be delighted to visit with you. My team and I would be delighted to help you. It simply starts with a phone call.